How's it going today guys? Today we're going to be talking about how to invest your first $1,000. So you have $1,000, you've decided you don't want to spend this money, and instead you would like to invest that money and let it grow into more money in the future. And first of all, I would like to applaud you for making this decision. Now I can remember a time when I thought that saving $1,000 would be impossible. In fact, I can remember when my dad first showed me a $100 bill, I was about 8 years old, and I asked him if I could have one of those someday, if I could possibly earn one, and he said if I worked hard, I could have $100. So you have $1,000, I'm sure you've worked very hard to save it up, and you're ready to put that money to work. I know that my first job that I ever had was pushing grocery carts at a grocery store, and I made $7.30 an hour. So it would have taken me about 140 hours to save up $1,000, and that's before taxes were even taken out. So you have possibly spent hundreds of hours accumulating this $1,000, and I want to encourage you not to waste it on a gamble. I want you to invest it in something that is going to benefit your future, or invest in something that is going to likely appreciate in value. Now before I get into this video, it is a Monday after all, and we're giving away a free membership to Stock Radar. That is my weekly stock analysis membership site, which is also becoming an educational platform as well. I'm adding many different courses, and the course on technical stock analysis is coming out this week as well. But the winner of this is Intelligent Money Investing. You commented hashtag Stock Radar on one of my YouTube videos, and so you've won a lifetime membership to Stock Radar. And if you guys want to enter this weekly giveaway, all the details are in the description below, and there are five different ways that you can enter and win. But the very first thing we have to talk about before we consider investing $1,000 into anything is what is your current financial situation like? Because like we already said, about 78% of Americans out there are in debt. And it's possible that you have $1,000 in cash or $1,000 in the bank, but maybe you still have debt that you need to pay off. And I know you're eager to invest your money. You're eager to put your money to work and start earning interest and start getting ahead. But you can't really get too far ahead if your feet are stuck in the mud. And what I mean by that is, do you currently have any debt? And if so, what is the interest rate of that debt that you currently have? So over the past 100 years, on average, the stock market has returned about 8 to 10%, and we're going to use 8% as a conservative figure, and that's what it's returned on average per year over a very long span of time. Now, if you know anything about the stock market, you know you're not going to get a guaranteed 8% return every single year, but that's the average rate of return you could expect to receive. So if you have any debt right now that exceeds 8% interest, it actually makes sense to pay off that debt before you begin investing in the stock market. So let's say for example's sake that you have $1,000 invested in the stock market earning you an 8% return, but you also have $1,000 on a credit card and you're paying 25% interest on that debt. So that $1,000 stock market investment would earn you $80 over that year. Meanwhile, you would be paying your credit card company $250 in interest. So you're actually not getting ahead here by investing in the stock market, and it would make more sense to pay off your high interest debt first. So if you've taken stock of your current financial situation and you find that you have high interest debt, you need to pay that off before you start investing in the stock market or investing in anything out there just due to the fact that you're not going to get a return that's going to likely exceed what you're paying in debt. And it's going to make a lot more sense to pay off your debt first before you begin investing and start off debt free before you start putting money into the market. Now one question you might have is what if you have a car payment or what if you have a mortgage on your home and let's say that interest rate is around 4%. Well, if you can earn about 8% in the market and you're paying 4% to borrow that money, you're still making a 4% return by investing that money in the stock market. So in that situation, it would actually make sense to invest while having low interest debt. So I'm not saying you have to be completely debt free. You may decide to do that, but I am saying that you should pay off your high interest debt before you begin investing in the stock market. Now the second thing I want to discuss here is why people end up going into debt. Do we just wake up one day and decide that we want to put $3,000 on a 25% interest credit card? My guess is absolutely not. This usually happens during a time when we're in a crisis mode. 
maybe you can't afford your groceries or your utility bill or you need to buy new clothes and it's a necessity. Usually this happens out of necessity and not out of want or need. Now if you are going into debt due to wants and needs, then you really need to think about what is more important to you, that short-term gratification or the long-term gratification of investing. And the fact that you're watching this video tells me that you at least have some interest in investing for your future and you really need to think about what's going to be more important for you, that uh, brand new handbag or brand new pair of jeans or investing and saving money and building wealth for yourself for the future. But after you pay off your high interest debt, the very next thing that you want to do is prevent the need for debt in the future, and that is by putting together a cash cushion. Now, this amount is gonna be different for everyone. For me, it's $10,000. I always keep $10,000 of liquidity in my checking account no matter what because I don't ever want to be in a situation where I'm gonna go into debt or have to pay interest to somebody else out there. Now, this all depends on what your cost of living is and how much money you're spending each month. And so what I recommend is having enough money on hand to cover all of your expenses for three to six months. So put yourself in this situation. You lose all of your sources of income tomorrow. How long would you be able to sustain yourself? And if that answer is one week, if that answer is one day, then you need to put together a cash cushion to prevent the need for going into debt in the future. And this is a mistake that I made myself. I used to invest all of my money into the market. I used to keep $1,000 in checking and I can remember a situation where I ended up having to pay for a car repair out of nowhere. I had to spend $2,000 fixing my car and I had $700 in checking. So I had to sell some of my stock market investments and luckily I didn't lose any money. But if I was in a situation where my stock market investments were down and I had to sell at a loss in order to get that money to pay for my car repair, I would not be in a good situation. Okay, so now that we've covered the two most important parts here, which is paying off your high interest debt and building a cash cushion, let's actually talk about how you can invest and put your money to work. And the very first thing I want to discuss is investing in individual stocks or buying stocks of companies. Now, how do you pick a stock out there? How do you find out what stock to invest in? Well, I have hundreds of different videos on my YouTube channel. I have a free course on how to find a great investment. I'll link that up in the description below if you guys wanna check that out. But what I recommend to you is keep it simple. Think about investors like Warren Buffett. They invest in very simple businesses that they actually understand. You don't hear about Warren Buffett investing in biotechnology companies or the brand new hot tech IPOs. He invests in well-established financially stable companies and I encourage you to do the same as a beginner in the stock market. So what I would recommend is picking one to two different companies out there that you truly believe in, that you wanna get behind, that you want to be a part owner of, and buy some shares of those companies. Now, as far as how to buy stocks, again, I cover all of this on my channel here. I have countless videos about investing in the stock market, and that is what I do. I'm an individual stock owner. Now, why do I recommend just investing in maybe one or two companies? It is because I don't want you to spread yourself too thin. I have a private stock market investing group that I work with people and I talk with people about their investments. And I've had a couple of students approach me and tell me they're investing in 50, 60, 70 different companies. And that is just way more than anyone could keep track of. So companies are going to be reporting their quarterly earnings four times a year. They also release their annual reports. And imagine if you're trying to keep up on the earnings reports of 50 different companies. That means you're going to have to be reading 200 different earnings reports each year and listening in on these earnings calls. And if you're not doing these things, you're not really being a good investor because you're not keeping track of your investments. So if you decide to invest in a company, you should stay on top of things. You should listen to the quarterly earnings calls. You should read the annual reports. And if you're investing in 50 or 60 different companies, it's gonna be more than you can likely keep track of. So I would say pick one or two companies, businesses you can easily understand, your favorite companies out there, and be a proud investor of that company, and spend a lot of time learning about that company and continuing to keep track of their progress by keeping track of earnings reports and reading annual reports and uh, doing things like that. Now the next way you could decide to invest $1,000, and I certainly don't recommend this, but I do want to cover it, is you can make a speculation. So a speculation is kind of like a gamble. It's kind of like rolling the dice. It's investing in something that you don't really know a lot about. Nobody really knows a lot about it because it's something that's brand new, but you see a high potential return from this investment. Now in 2017, this was cryptocurrencies. This was a lot of these ICOs or initial coin offerings. But if you're looking at the stock market, this could be investing in a penny stock. 
This could be investing in a stock that just recently went public. But if you're looking to invest your money and not have a lot of risk with what you're investing in, you're going to want to invest in something that people have been investing in for decades and making a return from their money. So if this is blue chip stocks, you know that people have been making money with these for decades. How long have people been making money on cryptocurrencies for? A much shorter amount of time. And so when you're speculating, you have to understand that you could potentially lose everything. And I do understand that some people out there, especially young people, have a massive amount of risk tolerance and they're not afraid of losing all of that money they would rather have the chance of making a thousand percent return and losing everything than getting an eight percent return on their money per year i just want you to understand that if you do make a speculation you should be willing to lose 100 percent of that money so if you woke up tomorrow and your one thousand dollar investment turned into thirty dollars or it went to zero, you can't beat yourself up because you knew this going in, you knew you were making a speculation, and there was always a chance that you could be wrong. But if you're a young person and you want to speculate, I'm not gonna discourage you from doing this because you're either going to be right or it's going to be a very good lesson for you and you're gonna learn a lot from the experience. So I don't discourage you guys from doing this, but you certainly don't have to. Now the next way you can invest $1,000 is to invest in an index fund. Now a lot of people don't know what these are, but it's very simple to understand. Basically what an index fund is, it's a pool of different stocks or a pool of different investments. And we're going to be using a Vanguard index fund called the Vanguard 500 or the VOO fund for an example in this video. And it's an investment people have been buying for years, people have been making money with this for years. And so this is something I can really get behind and recommend to somebody who's looking to begin investing in the stock market. So if you're not interested in buying individual stocks or researching investments or keeping track of stocks, Another great option is to just own the entire market. So this can be done by buying low fee index funds and one of the best ways to do this is to buy Vanguard index funds. Now the way that you buy this would be through an ETF or an exchange traded fund. And what that means is you're buying shares of this fund as you would a stock on the stock market. So just like a stock has a stock symbol, like Amazon has the symbol AMZN, you can buy shares of the Vanguard 500 fund under the symbol VOO. So the Vanguard 500 fund replicates as closely as possible the performance of the S&P 500, and the S&P 500 is the 500 largest publicly traded companies in the United States. So if you wanted to invest in the 500 largest companies out there, you can do so by buying shares of VOO or the Vanguard 500 fund. And the idea behind this is rather than trying to pick the winners out there, trying to pick what stock will perform the best, one of the best strategies out there is just to invest in the whole market and be involved in the entire race. One of my favorite examples here as an analogy is to look at horse racing. Are you trying to bet on the outcome of this race and pick which horse is going to win? Or would you rather bet on the entire race and make money if all the horses do well? That is a difference between investing in individual stocks and investing in the entire market. It's like picking a winning horse or being able to make money when all the horses do well. And then the final way that you can invest $1,000, and it's one that people don't often talk about, but it's investing $1,000 in yourself. And this is gonna be different for everyone. Maybe it's investing in a business or investing in something that will allow you to make more money. I'm gonna use myself as an example. When I was working a nine to five job, and for those of you that don't know, I'm now a full-time YouTuber. I educate people and make videos like this. But I used to work a nine to five job and I got this idea for a YouTube channel and I decided to try it out. I decided to buy a camera, to buy a whiteboard, and it cost me about $1,000 to make that investment in myself and start making videos online. And I've now created a six-figure income online. I make over six figures from this YouTube channel and my different businesses associated with it. So if you think about the return on investment of that $1,000, that's a crazy return on investment over the course of just about a year and a half. So you're always going to get the best ROI by investing in yourself. So if there's anything you want to do out there, if you want to pursue some kind of education, or you want to take some kind of course online and start a business, or you want to start a YouTube channel or a blog or do anything like that, I'm always going to encourage you to do that first before you invest in something outside of yourself. You're always going to get the best return on your investment by investing in something outside of yourself. And if you're somebody who does not want to invest in yourself, that is when you would consider investing in something outside of yourself, like individual stocks or index funds, or maybe you want to make a speculation. 
Now, if you're interested in learning more about investing in yourself, jump over to my Facebook page because I put together a resource there on my top four favorite ways to invest $1,000 in yourself. I'm gonna link that up in the description below and I'll also leave a pinned comment so you guys can check that out. But anyways, guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. This is the best ways to invest $1,000. I know you've spent a lot of time saving up this money and I just want to encourage you to really be patient when deciding what to invest in. It's a lot of money and for most people, they don't even have $1,000. So make sure you're putting it into something that's valuable, that's going to be a good learning lesson for you or something that's going to appreciate in value or invest that money in yourself and allow yourself to make more money going forward. But I thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like. And if this is your first time seeing my face here, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. And like I said, I do have a lot of free resources available to you guys. I have a free course on how to find a great investment, all about finding good investments in the stock market. I have that free resource on my Facebook page, the top four ways to invest $1,000 in yourself. So make sure you guys check those out if you're interested. But thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. If you are interested in learning more about investing in the stock market, I've created a free course just for you. The link is in the description below. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy as well.